Eric Stanley Jr. literally became the number one player in the country, and that was as a ninth grader. As a 14-year-old, started having articles written about his talent, his ability, and all of it was positive. All of it was talking about how great he is, how great he's going to be. The more accolades he received, the more humble and gracious he got. I don't really think of him as like a famous person, unless people are like, oh, that's Derek Stanley's sister. Forgot that almost half the state knows who he is. I don't see what other people see. He's just my brother. <laughs> he don't look at it as I'm better than the next guy. He would probably give his teammates more of the accolades on why he is who he is. It's because of them. When you're the most talented player in the locker room, but then you're the hardest working player in the locker room, that just raises the level of everybody. If you do what you have to do on the field, there's not much that you really have to say. You can't be a leader if you're not doing the stuff that you're telling people to do. You gotta be able to back it up. But fans love to be critical, whether it's social media or message boards on the internet. They can be ruthless. I said, I tell you what, put the two clown faces. Laugh now, cry later. That can be more your rallying cry. You laugh at me now, but you're gonna cry later. Baton Rouge is very country. The food is amazing. We got a lot of seafood, a lot of spicy foods, and sports, football, like all of it, that's a big part of Baton Rouge. Growing up in Baton Rouge for most of our kids, they just have it kind of bred in them naturally that they're gonna go play football. My first memory of football is really in our backyard at home, just putting the football on the kickoff tee and just kicking it off that into the fence. Growing up, watching football has always been a thing in the Stingley home. Started playing arena football and then into the Jets and the Jaguars on the practice squad and went back to arena. Then I became coach in arena and that was basically my life. Football, football, football. Practicing with my dad's team in arena football, having to put on full pads, I feel like that's when I really started to like football. He became serious about it. It was all on him. It was plenty of days he would get me up and say, hey, let's go out front, let's go out back. So it was all on him. I got introduced to Derek Stingley Jr. He was just 13 years old. He was going into the eighth grade, so we weren't ready to put him up with the varsity yet, but he did start training with our varsity guys, and the very first day, I mean, he just impressed everybody. He was a little guy. He was, you know, super skinny and short, but he was the smoothest athlete out there. I never had any self-doubt about anything as far as not being able to deal with the speed or being able to play with everybody. When we started the football season, he was with our middle school team. Every time he touched the ball, he scored a touchdown. Any pass that was thrown, he was intercepting it and just making devastating tackles. So we actually moved him up to the high school team as an eighth grader, and he was playing with the seniors, the juniors, the sophomores. He was playing with all the older guys. I never thought that I was just smaller or weaker than everybody else. I, I just was paying attention to me, so I was just doing what I could do. Derek experienced immediate success. The athletic ability you could recognize, you know, pretty quickly. But as he started to get a little bit bigger, a little bit faster, a little bit stronger, you could really see it start to take shape. Not just being a great athlete, but being a great football player. Got his first offer at 14. Then he became the number one player at his position at 16. Gatorade Player of the Year in Louisiana. First team All-American. Derek got offered after his ninth grade year by Coach Miles at LSU, and so that was kind of a big deal for a freshman to get a scholarship offer. We're obviously in LSU country, so pretty much wherever you go, you'll see something that involves LSU. They love football. When I got the offer from LSU, it kind of just made me be like, okay, I can actually do this for real, like at the next level. I committed it on spot. I wanted to be a Tiger. The other offers started rolling in. Then, then I started realizing that this is kind of like a big deal. Every SEC school is going to offer him, you know, LSU, Alabama, Florida. And he'll have like a stack of letters from different colleges, like this hall. It was just like kind of annoying <laughs> because we'll get so much letters and I'll think like, oh, I finally have something. And I'll be like, nope, it's just Derek. <laughs> he knew if he was playing at LSU, you would have family and friends waiting for you to walk out of that locker room, and that meant a lot to him. Being raised in Baton Rouge, just being in the community, I mean, I, I don't see anything that's, that's better than that. Our school has little three-year-olds, and when they would see Derek, I mean, he was a celebrity on our campus, but they'd run up and jump on his back, he'd give them piggyback rides, he'd high-five them walking down the halls. Those kids, they're not gonna forget those type of moments. I think that they really enjoyed it. I definitely did. 
He spoke to a group of youth football players at a camp that we had here, and they asked him, why aren't you going to Alabama? Alabama's number one. He immediately said, because I want to be able to play in front of y'all. For him to have that on his heart immediately, it wasn't a scripted thing, I thought was pretty special. My freshman year at LSU, the first couple of days, like the game, it was like really fast, but then it slowed down a lot. It started, it started feeling like, like high school football again. It is intercepted. It's the freshman, Derek Stingley Jr. He becomes first team SEC. He was consensus All-American, which hadn't been done by a freshman. National championship as well. He was a major piece to that. 2019, his freshman year, he had this incredible season, maybe one of the greatest teams in college football history. People look at that and say he was this superstar, this superhero. Then you fast forward to his 2020 year, and they say, well, what happened? You know, there was some adversity. They were dealing with COVID, so the season was up in limbo. When he was a freshman, quarterbacks attempted throws at him 97 times. His sophomore year, they only threw the ball his way 30 times. So most of it was respect. Stats say they're good when, when they're good, but like most times whenever they're not, all of that, just pay attention to the film. And then if you look at every single play, you see he gets different routes, exotic routes, smoke and mirror routes, because they have to do more to try to get open. He was getting a lot of fan support here, but then it was some starting to chirp a little bit. Going into my third year, trying to have another great year, just like my freshman year and my sophomore year. The first day of practice, he tore his Liz Frank, which is a very serious injury. I was just saying, tape it up. I'm, I'm gonna still go out there. I just wanna play. He played three games with a torn Liz Frank. No one knew that tore it completely off because he was trying to play through it. Couldn't play no more. It was the first time I had like a like a serious injury. I didn't have that same like power that I that I wanted. It was tough. It was tough. Nobody really had any idea that he was dealing with a really serious foot injury and he was doing everything he could to battle and be out there. We just said he had a procedure done on his foot and he's doing all he can to get back on the field to be with his brothers. Derek loves his teammates and he loves his school. He didn't want to opt out. He didn't want the LSU fans to think that he wasn't doing his best. And I think that puts a lot of pressure on anybody, but especially a young man. Fans, they're gonna say, they're gonna say whatever they, they wanna say. They have no idea what we do on a daily basis or what we put ourselves through or what we push through. Everybody who's who's around me or sees me every day, they, they know what I do. They know I push through whatever I can. I just know that he's been like working hard, like really hard for something that most people haven't seen yet. It's what I always say about 1090. Life is 10% what happens to you, but it's 90% how you react to it. 1090 is definitely a big thing in the Stingley household. Life is gonna come at you in millions of different ways, and it's up to you of how you're gonna react to it, if you react to it in a positive way or a negative way. Whatever the outcome is, is because of you. He would always ask me my thoughts or if I can help with a tattoo concept. The very first one was on his forearm. It was a stopwatch. It had fire coming out of it. The time is set on his birthday, June 20th. We did some roses on it, and then we did put a ribbon right there that we was gonna put a name in there. But I said, leave that one blank. You might wanna put your firstborn child name in there. I personally like the DVU, cause I just think it really pops cause it's red. <laughs> and when I saw it, I was like, "What? what is that? And then he told me, I said, oh, okay. It's saying something. The one I actually drew is this one that's on his chest. He wanted this Bible verse in it. We drew a tiger head and his number 24. And the doves just represent peace of mind. I really care about the tattoos that I have. We want to be able to make sure that they stay looking fresh. And the Matt Rabbit balm, it really helps it stand out. You know, I shared with him a quote that talks about people, they won't remember what you say, uh, they won't remember what you did, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. I could tell in the way that he interacted with so many people that he really wanted to make them feel special. I can't wait to be there and watch there get drafted. For him to get that call from whoever it might be and, and for him to be excited, I'll certainly be proud, but I'll be excited for Derek. I'm mostly looking forward to his legacy that he's gonna keep carrying on from like my grandfather to my dad to like him now and like him to show off all of his abilities that I know he's been hiding. <laughs> my son wanted to be an NFL player and the stars got aligned to the point where now he's get to have that opportunity. It's a parent's dream to see your child live out their childhood dream.
And that's what he's gonna be doing. First, second, third, fourth, whatever. He's playing in the NFL. And that's all that we want and hope for, and it's coming to be. When I'm in Vegas and, and my name gets called, like, I'm gonna be happy for the first couple of seconds, but then it's time to go, it's time to work. I'm just excited to see what the rest of our lives got to bring.